Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to this week's CSA Development Economics webinar. Before I introduce our speaker today, let me briefly set the ground rules as always. Chris uh, will speak for 45 minutes. Um, after the presentation, there will be uh, 13 minutes of open uh, Q&A. And yeah, thanks for joining us um, today. Our speaker today is Chris Woodruff, our, our very own at uh, Oxford. Um, he'll present on the long-running effects of cash transfers, the uh, Sri Lanka micro enterprise project after 10 years. I'm personally quite excited to see um, what has become of this project after such a long time and of the participants. Uh, thank you very much, Chris, and the floor is yours. Okay, thanks, Lucas. Uh, and I will uh, uh, find my slides here. Uh, okay, we can uh, see that. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Thanks. Thanks everyone for uh, for for coming, uh, and uh, I look forward to comments and uh, and and questions. This is still kind of a work in a work in progress that we're uh, slowly making our way through the, through the data. So this is uh, joint work with uh, Suresh Damel and and uh, and David McKenzie, uh, uh, following on from uh, earlier work. So. You know, just a bit of motivation. Field experiments are are kind of entering middle age in in development. We're we're now beginning to see you know things that experiments that happened quite a long time ago, and and it opens the opportunity to exam examine long run outcomes. Uh, though this is still you know somewhat uncommon, I and mean, people are, are beginning to follow up more and more on 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 a, a experiments. Um, it's challenging often because small sample sizes and and you know tracking participants even during an experiment is challenging enough and then tracking them over a much longer period of time uh much more so um and uh you know there, there are significant challenges to that and and we'll you know i'll, I'll discuss some of that in in what we in in, in what we in, in what we talk about and present uh, uh here there's a broader literature that takes a you know that follows people long term using administrative records um, and you know Bryce Chetty the, there's there's work with with school uh, early age school programs in the U S and so forth using administrative records that has the advantage of being able to trace people uh, more more reliably uh, over over time, but that's of course particularly challenging uh, in lower income settings where the administrative records are often not available or only have recently become available so that there there's not as much uh, not as much there the long run studies that do exist often show that outcomes change quite substantially uh over the longer run and and you know one of the things quite closely related in a sense to to, to our project uh uh the work by uh chris blattman uh nathan fiala and and and, and others that that uh looks at the long run follow-up from the cash grant project in uh in uganda that finds that uh, the effects of uh, grants, $400 grants that were given to Ugandan youth diminish and statistically disappear after, after nine years. Um, on the other hand, the, some of the ultra poor programs show sort of continued effects of asset transfers and, and particularly the recent paper by uh, Oriana and, and co-authors uh, in, uh, uh, in, 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 in Bangladesh along, uh, along, this, uh, along these lines. Nevertheless, the, the, the paper that Bugan and, and, and you know, Mike, Michael Kramer and Ted, the, the paper that they do that's, that's that sort of reviewing some of this, you know, concludes that most gains appear to phase out, fade out after after several years. So, we set out in this project to revisit the participants of the uh, Sri Lankan Microenterprise Survey uh, ten years and then thirteen years after the uh, initial intervention. Um, the initial participants were twenty to sixty five. They were all adults at the time of the, of the intervention. We also aim um, in 2019 to survey the children who were aged four to 18 at the time of the original grant in the in the household and we were particularly interested in for them in educational outcomes and I'll show you some some data for those as well I mean one of the we looked at education when we were doing the the project but you know there's a potential improvement with the retrospective data there's a potential improvement in statistical power relative to the data that's collected contemporaneously because children tend to drop out of school in Sri Lanka 
either after O levels, GCSEs, O levels, or after A levels. And we had a limited number of those children in our window in the couple of years that we were doing work. And now when we go back retrospectively and ask about education, we're able to kind of pick up a, a, you know, that those, those effects at, a, at a, longer, a longer period of time. So um, we, we have, of course, a, a paper that we did uh, that was published in Science uh, uh, now nine years ago uh, that shows results after five or six years and shows that basically the results that we got from the original experiment sustained after, after five or six years. And the longer term follow-up, we want to we want to ask, you know, whether control firms catch up uh, as they eventually make the same investments, whether treated firms kind of fritter the money away or, you know, whether shocks lead to disinvestment. So either of these would see, you know, convergence in the, in, in the, in the outcomes. Or instead, do we see compounding of the original investments that firms that 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 were made in the in the firm, so that the advantage is maintained or even expanded over over the control group? So, the outline is first you're going to say wow when you look at the results, and then you're going to say huh because the results are going to get kind of confusing, and then you're either going to say I get it, and then you're going to explain it to me because I'm 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 not sure we fully understand the results, or else you'll just say I don't know, and and then we'll see what happens. Um, more seriously, the outline is, we'll go through quickly the original experiment. Um, I'll, I'll say something about enterprise and individual outcomes. Then we'll say something about household incomes and outcomes, and we'll talk about the, about the children. I mean, it's a fairly straightforward sort of set of empirical results that have to do with, you know, that have to do with the, the experiment that, that we, you know, just following up on the experiment that we did, that we did it, uh, initially. Um, okay. Let me, I'll, I'll go through sort of the original experiment and the review of that, and then I'll pause and see if there are any, if there are any questions before we start into the, the data that we get from the, from the follow-up, uh, from the follow-up experiments. So in April, uh, in November, 2005, we gave grants of roughly $100 or $200 to about two thirds of a sample of 600 enterprises in, in micro enterprises in Sri Lanka. Um, the 600 enterprises were selected as enterprises that had less than $1,000 in capital stock, not counting land and buildings. They had no paid employees. They were in either trade services or manufacturing in urban and semi-urban areas uh, along the south and southeast coast of, uh, of, of Sri Lanka. Um, roughly half of them were female and half were male uh, owned. Uh, the owners, as I said before, were between the ages of 20 and, and 65. Um, we, we thought of the enterprises and selected the enterprises to be, effect, to be in three zones uh, moving away from the coast. So the work was done immediately following the Boxing Day tsunami in 2004. Um, and we have a set of enterprises who are affected by the tsunami, directly affected by the tsunami. They lost assets, they suffered water damage and other, other things right along the coast. We have a group of enterprises that are slightly further inland, so they're not affected by the, uh, or on slightly higher ground. So they're not affected by the tsunami. They didn't suffer damage from the tsunami, but their markets were very severely disrupted for some period of, for some period of time. And then we have a group that's much further inland that, that are unaffected. Um, in, um, we did a baseline survey in March 2005. We gave the first grants out just after that. And then we did nine quarterly and two semi-annual surveys that covered a period of three years. That was the original, the original experiment. Um, the control firms were all given uh, $25, 2,500 rupees uh, after the fifth wave of the survey. So after one year uh, into the survey and uh, uh, the results I present today, well, everything will be coded in terms of treatment as 0 0.251 and two. So it's, you know, it's, it, we're going to pick up the control groups getting the treatment that they get when they, when, when they, when they get that, when they get the treatment. Um, this is just, you know, it, there's a sense in which we ask what what should we expect to see in some of in, in with with some of the at least the enterprises where the owners were somewhat older at the time we did the initial survey um, you see a pretty good distribution of 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 owner age this is the owner age in 2005 so at baseline a pretty good distribution at, at, of owner age at baseline 
when we look at labor force participation uh, data from Sri Lanka, this isn't from our survey, it's from, from labor force surveys, you know, we see as people reach the age of 50, 55, that labor force participation starts to fall quite, quite rapidly. So we might expect that there'll be transitions in some of these enterprises. And I think that's going to be part, part of what makes the story in the longer run slightly um, harder to unpack and, and figure out kind of uh, and, and figure out what's uh, what's going on. And I'll, and I'll come back to that as, as, as we get back to the to the end of the the survey. So this is the geography uh, I mentioned before. Um, firms that are are affected by the tsunami right along the coast. Some firms that are slightly further inland, but in sa in similar sort of geographic in sort of sort of urban areas, so that the markets are affected. And then group of firms that's much further inland. In a lot of the earlier work, we focused only on the yellow dots and the red dots, so the ones that were not directly affected. And what I'm going to show you today in the interest of statistical power and because we find that firms uh, recover eventually, even the ones along the coast, uh, sort of equally to, to the other firms, I'm going to use the entire sample of, 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 uh, of, of firms uh, that, we, that we have. Um, so this is, you know, the previous, the previous results we found in 2008 that um, uh, using only the in, in, uh, indirectly affected or unaffected zones, the again the red dots and yellow dots on that on that picture we just looked at, we found returns of about five percent a month for male-owned enterprises and zero percent for uh, female enterprises. Female-owned enterprises. Um, in 2012, uh, we have a paper that analyzes the directly affected firms, the purple dots on that on that graph. Um, we find very low or no returns in the manufacturing uh, in the manufacturing sector, but uh, much higher returns uh, in the retail sector in particular, um, uh, and an average uh, average returns in the in the affected area of about eleven percent, so much higher than they are than they are inland. Um, and then, uh, as I said before, we did a five year follow up in two thousand in two thousand twelve. Actually, surveys in two thousand eleven. Uh, and uh, and we measure returns of around 12% for males and 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 0% for for females. Neither significantly different from the returns in the in the earlier in the earlier years. And here we're going to analyze the these returns from longer term. And this is the the table from from the science paper at five to six years, which basically shows for males uh, an increase in uh, you know an, an increase in profit rates seemingly at an increasing somewhat increasing rate although most of that you can see is we when we when we truncate when we windsorize at i think this is at windsorized at 90 99 percent even taken off that one percent tail we see something that looks much more like a flat uh slope across time but we do see uh uh we do see uh uh you know continued uh uh gains in the enterprises that receive the grants among males I don't have the table here for females, but but we find uh, uh, something quite uh, you know similar to what we found in the baseline, which is which is uh, returns of close to zero for uh, for females. So let me let me pause there for a second and see if there are any questions. This is just the, the setup at this point of what and a review of what the original original experiment was. Uh, Julian. I, okay. Yeah, Julian. I think this is just a clarifying question. So when you do those kind of five years, and, and I guess you're going to tell us what you do later, is it like, is it the, are you following the firms? Or are you following the owners? And yeah. how do you define yeah. firms? Ex ex excellent question. So we're going to spend a lot of time with this. And I've, and I've, and I've spent an, an, an enormous amount of time with, uh, uh, with, with Alden uh, Kasarevich, who's on the, who's on the call here as well on the, in, uh, who's done, who's done all the tedious work of going through and trying to match names and figuring out whether the phonetic spelling of this name is the same as the phonetic spelling, you know, a slightly different spelling, uh, if it really represents the same person or not. And so we are going to try to trace when uh, owners change, and we'll try to say something about whether, um, uh, you know, I'm going to look at a set of outcomes that where we'll focus on the enterprise, and a, and and a set of outcomes where where we focus more on the on the original on the original owner and i think part of the puzzling results that we're going to that that to us somewhat puzzling results that we're going to see which is sort of a disconnect between what's happening in the enterprise and what's happening in the household is partly exactly this this problem that we this issue that we get we get 
some disillusion of the households even we we have people who 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 pass away of course and 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 so and we have some people who migrate and other businesses that are passed to to children and things like that where the household may not be quite the same and i i think we're not quite all the way there yet but but this is kind of what the the tedium of the work is in a sense of figuring out when when we have these these situations and we and we do have we have the name of the owner at each round of the enterprise so so we're that's that's the basis we're trying to match up and then in these longer run tenure um surveys we have a set of questions uh that say you know are you the original owner and if not what happened to the original owner and how did you get the business and things like that and you know those two don't always match up sometimes it looks like the name stays the same and they tell us they're not the original owner and sometimes the reverse and so that's you know, I think most of what I'm going to show you is robust to using either one of those definitions, but that's that's the challenge and is exactly the challenge in this is do we follow the business or do we follow the individual? And I think we get differences when we when we get some differences when we, when we do that. So I'll I'll uh, I'll come back. I'll come back to that. Um, yeah, so Annette, this this was that the 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 grants themselves were were uh, were randomized at the at 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 the. Uh, so, so it was um, roughly 40% um, of the firms, I said two thirds, it's really more like 60% who get grants. Roughly 40% of the firms get uh, a $100 uh, grant randomly selected. Um, and uh, I think stratified on nothing. I think we just did, uh, we just did an Excel sheet, uh, random number, a uh, random number and, and, uh, and, and, and and did the the you know randomized at at the individual level, um, and then um, and then uh, another twenty percent get the two hundred dollar grants, uh, the two, twenty thousand uh, rupee grants uh, at the uh, uh, at at and all of that's in either April or November of uh, of two thousand two thousand five. So those are, those are all those are all randomized. Um, we carry out the tenure follow-up survey uh, in September 2015. That's wave 14 of the survey. In March of 2016, that's wave 15. And then after March, we did two uh, short phone follow-up surveys to get additional data on profits and and sales and and other 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 enterprise level outcomes. Um, and then um, you know when we looked at those data, we saw um, somewhat fragile results in education and other outcomes for children in the household that looked interesting, but but not really very robust. And so we made a, a fairly large effort in April of 2019 to go back and resurvey the enterprises, but with the idea of listing all of the children who lived in the household, I guess we actually listed all the children in March of 2016 in the household. We relisted them in 2019 and we asked the person that we did the survey with to contact the children and say that we would be getting, um, we would try to reach out to the children. And we tried to do uh, surveys with uh, the children that we found in, uh, in, in 2019. And as with the question I, I gave to Julian, there, there are different ways we can put the children's data set together because we didn't we don't get we don't reach everybody in April of 2019. We don't reach every household. So we can go back and look at outcomes from previous rounds that we have from household the household rosters that we did in previous rounds that give us basic outcomes like education and 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 work status of children living in the household. Um, and then we also did uh, in wave 19, we asked the household head to tell us about the outcomes of all the children for a basic set of outcomes. And then we contacted children. We have a different set of outcomes for them. We were able to reach 442 of the 518 children that we targeted from the April 19 survey. So that's a, you know, it's around 80%. It's, it's, it's uh, given the circumstances, we don't think it's too bad, but it's, but it's, but it means that for the extended set of outcomes that we have in the children's survey, you know, we have, we have a somewhat selected, we have a somewhat selected sample. We have more data on a basic set of outcomes like education and 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 things and things like that. Okay, so that 442 comes out of 611 children that we identify in the baseline survey who were um, who would have been aged uh, 18 to 32 in 2019. That is age four to 18 in 2005. That's the group that we kind of look at to say these are children who might have been affected by. Uh, the grants coming into the household and the and the growth in the in in the business and so forth. 
Um, so okay, so that's uh, okay. So the first the first set of outcomes is 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 um, first we want to just look at who are we able to follow up with and and um, and and what are the attrition rates. So you know for some outcomes and the, and the, you know the answer is going to be the attrition rate varies a lot depending on what the outcome that we're interested in is. Um, so do we know whether the person is self-employed or not? Well, we get that information from um, anybody we can talk to around the resident. So when we go do the survey, we if, if the original household is has moved away, we'll ask neighbors about whether the business is still operated. Often there's a family member who's, who's still in the area. We're able to get information from, from them. So do we know somebody is self-employed? You can see in the control group mean we're able to sort of uh, uh, you know, pin down whether they're they're self-employed. Uh, that individual is self-employed about ninety-four percent of the of the time. Um, uh, there's a small positive uh, coefficient on the on treatment, so uh, it's slightly higher in the treatment group, but not significantly so. Um, are we able to interview the original respondent? Um, uh, there are lots of reasons we might not interview the original respondent. Um, uh, one is that uh, the respondent is no longer there, has passed away, has moved away, the family's moved away, whatever. But another is somebody else is running the business. And when we start to say, we want to ask you about the business, they say, no, 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 I'm not the right person to talk to. You should talk to my, my daughter or my son or, or whoever is running, the, is running the business. So then we don't interview the original respondent, but, but we, we, we learn about the original respondent from the, from, from the respondent that we, that we uh, talk to. So that's why we know uh that whether the person's employed much more often than we know them than we actually interview the original respondent but you know again 70 percent of the time roughly we're interviewing the original respondent there is a treat significant treatment effect in that and that we're going to see when we get to to uh survival that that's partly related to the fact that for males we see an increase in survival rates of the businesses and so we're the business that's more likely to be operating we're more likely to talk to the original respondent respondents are less likely to have migrated uh the treated respondents are more likely to report profits that's related to to, to this interviewing the original respondent because the business is more likely to be operating um and the the current business if even if the original business is closed do they have another business um, that's, that's, uh, you know, that's also very common that at some point over the, the 15 year, uh, 13 years, they've closed the business, but they've got another business that operates. And so, so that's, uh, that's there. So, uh, females, uh, we don't see any significant treatment effects. Um, we see similar kinds of levels of you know, of of being able to find out about or reach, you know, sort, sort of attrition levels in the uh, in the uh, uh, in the in the uh, in the control group, but we don't see the we don't see the treatment groups. And again, the treatment effects. And again, that's going to come from the fact that um, when we say that has the original business closed um, for males, we see a sort of positive, you know, a positive survival effect of the treatment. For females, we see. A negative survival effect. The women who receive treatments are actually less likely to be run in the business. The businesses are more likely to have been closed. The women are less likely to be self-employed. Men are more likely to be self-employed. They're more likely to work for pay. Women, there's no significant difference on working for pay, but they're less likely to be working uh, in uh, in self-employment and they're less likely to be working in the enterprise. So, you know, this is kind of, I think the first finding that we see is that among the business, among the grants that we gave to women, those businesses are more likely to have closed. You know, the treated businesses are more likely to have closed, and uh, the women who ran them are more likely to be uh, not no longer self-employed. Although they're not significantly less likely to be working um, for working for pay. Um, okay, so that's uh, that's that's kind of survival and and. Uh, and 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 uh, uh, attrition from the survey, and then and then survival. And so I think Sorry, you know, Chris, take yeah. Um, can, can I just ask? Are there like relevant gender differences in the kind of desirability of different types of employment in Sri Lanka? Like, what would explain this gender difference? Yeah. Here? So I think I think um, there definitely are different sectors that people are in, and I guess one of the things we could do would be to look in the mixed gender sectors and see do we see a, 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 anything. So so I think you know. We, 
we in the earlier week we kind of look and say you know there's certain things like retail trade and so forth that are where where there are both men and women quite active in the in the in in those firms um there are certain things like sewing lace that are almost all all women um uh very flexible relatively low pay and so forth and then there's things like repair services and so forth that are that are much more you know likely to be men and manufacturing i think generally uh outside of manufacturing of food kind of related products are much more likely to be men. Um, I haven't actually haven't looked at differences across sector and that that might be interesting to look at because especially in the sectors where it's a mixed sector. Again, I, I'll come back to something towards the end that, um, because I, you know, I think what we also haven't completely unpacked in these data yet are, are sort of the transitions of, of, of what's going on. I, I, I think one of the things that that seems to maybe be going on is that some of the more successful female-owned businesses get 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 reclassified as male-owned businesses um, in the over over time, right? So when when they get the grant, then they get and they and they and they and they you know the the, the they they start to do better than the the male gets more interested in the in the, in the business, um, and so. So some of what might be going on here might be that as well. And I'm also thinking to myself, we really, I have here works for pay, but we should look at working period because it may be that there are, some of the women are, are now reporting themselves as being unpaid workers in a business where they're actually doing the same thing they were doing before, but because the business has survived, the, the man has taken it over. Um, um, okay, so this is, um, uh, in the interest of time, I won't spend a lot of time on this, but this is just to say, look, we do see this sort of shift to the right. This is the, if I look at earnings by self-employment uh, uh, group where we've, where we've put in zeros for uh, people who are um, no longer self-employed. So it's profits, you know, from business, regardless of whether you have a business or not. Um, you know, we see, we do see a shift to the right, particularly for for the men, we see some movement off the zeros for the for the women, but but we but we see much less of a of a movement to the to the right across the distribution for for women than we do for than we do for men. So basically, we're going to run very straightforward, simple regressions with um, time since treatment effects uh, grouped into five groups, less than a year between a year and two years, um, at three years between two years and three years, then the five to six year follow up and the ten to a 13 year follow up that will group into one uh, into one uh, into one group and we we've got um, we we use enterprise and survey wave fixed effects in 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 all of in in all of this and 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 look at the time since treatment so here's the first sort of set of <clears throat> results that we get for men i've kind of lighted i've i've sort of lightened the earlier results uh, and just so that we focus more on the long term results with the exception of the one column here which is the real profit um, where um, we've coded people who are not self-employed as having zero profits because the business is not is not operating in this case. This is the experimental result. So it, it's it's what we're, um, I'll show you some results in a minute where we look only at the business that continue to operate, but those are obvious, that's obviously an endogenous outcome. The operating is an endogenous outcome to the treatment itself. Um, and what we see is, you know, if we look at the Windsor House results, something close to what we, the same sort of pattern that we saw at five to six years at 10, 11 years, we see a continued, you know, a continued effect of the profit of the, of the original grants, which are now up to about 10% per month of what the original grant amount was. Um, this 783 and this 1083 are not significantly different from one another. So there, there, we can't say that these are, are expanding across time, but, uh, but we we also see this this pattern that we had seen before, where the standard errors are growing across time. So so the levels are growing, but the variance of the of the outcomes is also is also growing as we as we as we move out. Um, we don't see significant effects in the raw data, although the numbers are much bigger. Um, but you know the upper tail is is quite long, and and there's a lot and there's a lot of a uh, lot of noise in in that. We don't see significant results using uh, inverse hyperbolic sign. Um, a lot of what I'm going to show you today is going to use instead of inverse hyperbolic sign is going to use the the rank, the period by period rank among all the enterprises of that of that enterprise as a way of kind of indicating something that's not so driven by a long right hand tail. 
Um, so it's this is just a, a something similar to log hyperbolic sine, but it's but it's something getting to to this uh, uh, to this um, uh, to this to this uh, this area. And you know, then we see the it seems the the grant stayed in in terms of the capital stock. And again, if I go out to this level at the end, this is also Windsor as if we got to this level at the end, that's about that's almost twice the capital that we that we gave them that's in the in the business. And again, if we think that that's driven by a long right hand tail, even when it's Windsorized, um, we get something similar on the rank of uh, capital stock that we're seeing that that the businesses that were treated um, are further up uh, in the ranking of of of, uh, of businesses by capital stock. So so um, you know we, we're seeing sort of for the males a continuation of 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 what the earlier results are. And Peter, I think I saw a hand up. No. Okay. Um, so this is this is to spare your eyes, you know, from the regressions. The, these are the coefficients for for men on this side and for women. Uh, and and what we see for women is also a continuation that we don't see uh, any significant effects uh, on enterprise profits. In fact, you see these coefficients go negative, not significantly. But remember that we. We have a we have a survival effect, a negative survival effect for women. So some of this is driven by the fact that women, you know, that that there are more zeros in the in in the treatment group for women than there are than there are uh, in the control group because we've 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 pushed women out of the you know that the the women have have exited as a, as a, as a result of as a result of treatment. So um, so we see significant you know most of the time significant effects at the ninety percent level at least at the ten percent level. Um, but uh, for 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 men uh, and uh, and no no significant effects for women. This is the same uh, regression for for the regression results for women. Uh, no significant effects. In fact, the only ones that are significant are significant and negative, which are on the inverse hyperbolic sign and the uh, and the rank of of profits. So we're not you know we continue to see uh, no effects in the in the enterprises uh, for uh, for uh, for for women. Um, sorry, Chris. I, yeah. I had difficulties on muting. Uh, oh, sorry. So do you, sorry. Do you have um, information? I think you do have information on, uh, if I remember correctly, on what they spent it on. And have you looked at that data? Yeah, we haven't looked at that data. Um, I mean, that's of course also an endogenous outcome, but but that I'm not I'm not completely shying away from endogenous outcomes here. So so I shouldn't uh, I, I shouldn't I shouldn't. Uh, but that's that's a good idea. We can we can look at what they spent it on. Uh, and and you're thinking about whether they spent it on inventories versus capital stock. That's right, and especially yeah. then uh, to yeah. to kind of figure out these different patterns between males and females. Well, I, I'll show you something. Let me let me come back to the males and females at the end because I'll show you something on the on the on the males and females that I, I is a sort of puzzling to us in a way. But but I think we can also look at that on the on the on the males. And but we did see before that women were investing more in sort of fixed assets. We have the the other the other paper. You know, we have this sort of sense that women are investing in fixed assets in part because it's easier to protect the the fixed assets um, and and protect the money when it gets in the business, perhaps. And so, um, so yeah, I, we can go back and I, that that's something I haven't I haven't looked at I haven't looked at yet. But I'm but I'm going to get to something I think where we where we start to. I, it's either where I either say there's more of a puzzle that here, or or we say maybe there's something that begins to explain some of this. Oh, okay, let me let so let me let me put, so this is I, I won't spend a lot of time on this. This is basically saying, look, maybe some of this is is driven by the fact that we're you know we have a negative survival effect for for female owned businesses, a positive survival effect for male owned businesses, and since I'm putting in zeros for the people who are not who know who are no longer self employed, of course the men are going to look better than the women. So now I'm going to give you again. This is this is now an endogenous outcome because it's taking just the businesses that are operating that continue to operate. Um, but we see, you know, the positive effects for for males. We see something similar with the the ranking of of capital stock, the ranking of of uh, real profits. Although although that that becomes insignificant, um, we see something for. Um, total labor income. This is slightly less endogenous because now this is defined for a broader set of the, the population. And in fact, I think we know we don't. Doesn't look like we do put in zeros for this. For this, but it's but it's defined at least for a broader set of the of the of the population. Um, 
the significance goes away. Again, what's happening is not so much the coefficient changing, but the standard error is changing as we go out because these 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 outcomes are are varying more. Um, if I do a the rank to try to get rid of the upper the, the effect of the upper tail, I, I do find the you know, marginally significant effects that remain on the people who are treated or are higher up in the ranking of total work of total work income for for males. Um, and you know. Um, uh this is uh that's real profits let me let me skip that uh, that 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 and and this is a similar results for for women and again you know negative effects for total labor income even marginally significant if we do the rank of total labor income and kind of nothing on 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 the on the profits uh in the in the enterprise itself even among the enterprises that continue to operate so this is kind of taking away the 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 survival, the survival effect. Um, uh, okay, so you know, there's there's a paper uh, Bernhard et al. that the uh, 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 Pandey and Eric Field and 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 others that that uh, that says, look, you know, this isn't so much that that the that the grants weren't weren't um, weren't productive. They just were productive in different different businesses in the in the household. And that we should be looking at at total household income and household assets and things like that, rather than the and individual enterprises. And partly this goes back to Julian's question of do we follow the individual and think about what's happening in the household, you know, or the household even, and find out what's happening there, or do we think of the this is just about the business? I mean, we're interested in the businesses themselves, but but the the the, the household uh, data is also interesting. So. The household results, when we look at them, to to me are quite puzzling, and and at, at least at first glance, which is we do, first of all, if if I compare, this is just the coefficients, and I'm I think I'm not going to show you the regressions. I'm just going to show you now the 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 the, the plots. Um, but when we look at first of all, when we look at males and females, we see zero difference across the entire. Um, across the entire distribution, there's a little bit of a gap there, but it disappears again. So really we see almost no difference between any of the, uh, any of the rounds in total household income that's reported by the, the two. And we see the effect of total, on total household income disappearing, even though the effect on profits for males is not, is not disappearing. So I think that's the thing that, not only is it puzzling that we see these massive differences in profits and you know, no difference in household income. That I think the Household Matters paper gives an explanation for. Um, but then those uh, those results go away. The household results go away, and the profit results don't go away, at least for males. And so, and so then I think there's a separate puzzle, which is which is which is on that. We never see any effect on on household expenditures for either males or females. Uh, Kate. Um, just what goes into household income? Is it like including remittances and transfers, or is it uh, including outside labor income? So, so um, a good question. And I think in almost all of the rounds, we have a question which is just what's your total household income, including I think we say including transfers and things like that. Now it's a it's a single reported number. So it's not, it's not, you know, make it that what, what you will, because it's, because does the person know what the household income is to, you know, so forth and so on. So it may be, it may be uh, something there. I have gone back and tried to add up the labor income. That's the only thing we would have at the individual level of everybody in the household. That turns out to be a whole lot noisier in part because it's often the case that, that it's missing for at least one member of the household. And then you have to say, what do we, you know, what do we do with that? And so, uh, generally, what we rely on here is the is the overall aggregate question: What's your total household income? And uh, and uh, yeah, okay, Jin. So I do have a question about the female ha household. Are they head yeah. of the household or wife or? Most of them are not head of the household. Most of them are are uh, are you know are, are 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 reported as spouse of the head of the household. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, okay, so we see nothing on expenditures. On the other hand, on assets, we we do start to see something that looks like it's appearing on assets. And again, I'm going to use the ranking of assets within round here um, rather than uh, uh, rather than the, um, the the values because here the values are the right you know the the dispersion in the values is enormous, and so and so even Windsorizing makes it makes it challenging. But um, 
we don't have those data at baseline. We only have them in certain years, which is why you see fewer bars on this on this graph. These are the only times that we've measured uh, household assets well. Um, you start to see something for men. You see something that's certainly no difference between men and women on assets. And on transportation assets in particular, we start to see people are buying like motorized uh, vehicles, either tuk-tuks or, 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 uh, uh, or motorcycles. And, and, it's, uh, and it's, you know, largely the men, the male business, the, the male recipients who are, who are doing that at the end. So we do see um, some effects on transport assets in particular, but in general, on assets, we see something, but not, but not, not hugely significant results. Uh, Mohammed, um, Chris, just going back to Kate's question about the definition of total household income, um, yeah. does the magnitude of the total household income compared to say the total profits uh, seem consistent, or is there some possibility that uh, what's being reported as total household income yeah. is also mixing some sort of revenue measure? Um, and do you separately uh, run a regression where you check the effect of revenue, which could potentially indicate whether the income is mixing people reporting revenues? Yeah. Profits? Uh, uh, so I think it's not, it looks more like profits. Um, it certainly looks more like profits than, than, than revenues, but, 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 uh, um, and I want to say when I've done the, what I, what I, now I remember, I think I may have done this, but I may not have, I may, may, may be making this up since something I should go back and do again. We have these household rosters and the labor, labor table where we ask everybody about, everybody in the household about earnings. Now, again, that's not going to pick up their remittances and transfers and things like that. But, but I think I've looked at the correlation between those and the reported total household income and they look pretty, and they look pretty reasonable for the households where we've got, you know, the, uh, you know, more or less complete set of reports on, on, on household labor income. And so basically what this is picking up, I think labor income and not, and not, and not revenues. I, I'm going to, again, I'm, let me, let me push on. So, okay. So here's, let me push on to this slide, which is basically, you know, it says, look, and this kind of goes back to, to Julian's question about transfers of the ownership of the business and how do we think about those transfers of the ownership of the business so we compare um, enterprises with no enter this is for males with no ownership change which is 162 of the businesses with those changing owners which is 129 of the businesses over the 15 you know the 13 years that um that that these are ones with no ownership change over the entire you know 16 year a 16 wave, so a 13 year period, these are ones with an ownership change. And when you look at household income for, when you look at profits for males, the blue lines are the ones that have the same owner. You don't really see much difference in the, in the males, whether it's uh, the same owner or a different owner. You start to see something that looks a little, you know, it's at least on the positive side of everything on, on the, on the, on the, on the ownership transitions for male household income. For females, um, you do see something that looks more, um, uh, more interesting, which is these are the, the red dots or bars are the ones with different owners. You see sort of a, a higher successful, uh, you know, sort of higher uh, profit uh, rank uh, level and a higher household income uh, level for the house for the enterprises that are owned by women who transfer ownership to uh, to to men at some point. Now this is the rank within uh, female enterprises within uh, a wave, right? So there, you know, this is I think what I said earlier that maybe part of this is that the more successful businesses get transferred to a different owner. And the less successful businesses are more, the ones that go that, that are either either shut or remain in the in uh, remain being operated by by women. So this is a totally endogenous outcome, and I think the data are sort of um, I'm going to say the data are sort of muddled enough in the sense that you know we've got we've done as I say we've gone through and carefully matched up names, but then you get to round 16 and somebody says it's not the same owner it's now operated by somebody in the house in the household and you look at the name and it's exactly the same name and it's the same age and it's the same everything so it's got to be the same individual that's being reported as the owner but they're telling us that it's somebody else so we have to figure out how to interpret those 
changes. But generally speaking, we're seeing a pattern like this for women where we do see something that looks like, um, uh, uh, you know, that the more successful businesses are being transferred, uh, they're surviving and they're being transferred to, 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 to men in the, in the, uh, in the enterprises. And I'll, I'll skip down real quickly to a couple of graphs down here, which are doing something similar for um, a range of different heterogeneity and a range of different characteristics. One of the other things we think of with household income in particular is whether the individual is still reported as being in the household. The last time we did a household roster, which was in 2016 when we did the round 14 survey, or 2015 when we done the, did the round 14 survey, you don't see a lot uh, going on here, but you do at least see kind of movements in the in the direction that we would that we might that we might think that you know it looks like maybe there are slightly higher household uh, income ranks among the the men and slightly higher profits in the business when the men are still reported being in the in the household. Um, again, not too much happening on this for for women uh, uh, either, except something that looks similar to what I showed you before, which is when the women when the same owner runs the business between round one and round 16 and it was a female business to begin with we see uh, lower profits kind of throughout the pretty much throughout the throughout the period so these transfers uh to women are are are, are somewhat uh you know seem to be associated with higher a higher uh a higher higher profit so let me let me sort of um I'm, I'm, I've gone over the time. So let me sort of quickly do this and then give you one minute on, on the children's results. And, you know, the children's results, unfortunately, we, we, did, we did put a lot of effort into going back, trying to survey the children themselves, trying to get better data on the children. Unfortunately, we ended up with something that was quite similar to what we had before, which is, you know, we're kind of most interested in these schooling outcomes. Um, and, you know, you see positive numbers, but not anything that's, that's either uh, uh, it, that, that not anything that's 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 statistically significant. So we get these sort of these sort of um, somewhat squishy uh, results when we have male owners who are, after all, the ones we're seeing as 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 having you know increases in profits. And when we look at boys, male children, um, and males children are the ones who are more at risk of dropping out of school at an earlier age in Sri Lanka than than women are. We we see something that's you know, slightly bigger in years of schooling and marginally significant in the rank of education, um, you know, marginally somewhat significant in the in the rank of income and so forth. Um, I, I don't want to make too much of this. This is this is, you know, it's 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 in one hand is sort of data mining. This is probably the logical place to to look, but we didn't have a we didn't have a pre analysis plan for this. So I'm not I'm not going to claim I don't I don't want to overclaim on this. But but but, you know, I think one of the things I would say is one of the things we've we've heard over the years is, oh, this may not be a good idea. You're going to encourage people to stay in self-employment. I don't think we're seeing much of of that. We're seeing you know much higher rates of work, but not much higher rates of self-employment for women. I think I don't show the numbers here, but we're we we don't see more self-employment among among the women and so forth. Um, you know, so on the children's results, I think you know we see a lot of kind of mild positive results, but not much of it is, is, uh, is uh, statistically uh, s significant, unfortunately. And same thing with sort of attitudes. We see uh, results that, you know, when we, when we do a standardized index are positive, but not, not, not statistically uh, significant of, of, uh, of, of attitudes in the, uh, in the, in, in the household. So, um, this, I think, is the question that we're still trying to unpack to some extent, whether the grant we should be following the recipient or the business. It's the question Julian asked earlier. And, it, and it's, um, you know, where we, uh, you know, if, if it were a market economy, we wouldn't worry about this. We'd say if we give the money to an individual, no matter what happens, they end up with the money. They're going to sell the business. It's going to be capitalizing the business or they're going to continue to operate the business. Um, here, it might be slightly different than that. Um, and... Uh, you know, some of the results we see on ownership transitions and things like that maybe are starting to under, un, un, unpack some of the some of the puzzles. So, um, so you know, the first puzzle I think that we come up with is, is is what's the model that leads to an abrupt increase in income for men for the male-owned businesses, but then no no accumulation after that. 
and that's that's a, something we talked about in the science paper, and it and it continues here as well. We don't we don't see an expansion of the businesses. We see we see this one one off effect, but no but no sort of continued um, compounding of that effect. We continue to see no effects on the female enterprises, although. Um, you know, we're beginning to kind of unpack some of the stuff about the transitions of some of the female enterprises. And there, I think we see some heterogeneity, even within, even on the enterprise side, we see some heterogeneity in what the, and what the results are. And, and then mostly uh, positive, but fragile results for the, for the children, fragile and, and, you know, mostly kind of marginally significant results for the, or insignificant results for the children. Um, and so, you know, we've got, we've got a sort of left still, we're trying to, as I say, we're really trying to carefully match up whether we have the same uh, owner, same businesses, and, and things like that, and and that's and that's kind of where we are with the uh, with the data. Okay, I'll stop there. Um, still have a couple minutes for questions. Um, Thank you very much, Chris. Um, I already see a few hands, and uh, maybe let's start with Hannah Burkel, who asked a question for yeah. us in the Q and A. So, uh, so I, we have done a lot of qualitative, semi-structured interviews over the years. Um, we we didn't. I don't think we did any in 2019, and we could we could try to get at some of these. My sense is there's enough heterogeneity in the answers that I'm not. I think we'd have to do a fair number of those interviews to be able to come up with a with a really you know coherent set of of responses. Because my again my sense is there's there are a lot of different stories out there about what what's happening and what and what the and and um one of the things i think I've, I've noted for a long time on these data even within the three-year window that we started with is that the standard errors grow as you go out over time so that to me is saying that the that, that, that the variance in outcomes is increasing and and when i say we don't see compounding uh, maybe you know, maybe we are seeing compounding in some in some businesses, and that's why we're getting kind of this increase in in the in the variance of, of outcomes. And we're seeing, you know, sort of frittering away the money in other businesses, which is why we're seeing an increase in the variance on the on the on the left hand side. So, I, I, I my sense is that we probably could benefit from doing some more open and interviews. We probably want to look at the data more and try to figure out some of the questions that come up within sector within within um, you know, uh, other other kinds of things. What is it that we, what is it we think are the stories that we want to try to really figure out in in a more nuanced way? Um, Mohammed, I think you're at the top of the. Sure. Just screen. before I get to my question, just on Hannah's point, I guess like this is super interesting story about the business transferring over from the from yeah. the man who becomes successful. So potentially that's somewhere where qualitative work yeah. could be interesting in terms of like telling us which sectors yeah. is happening and what's going on there. Like what's the logic. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we've just yes. on on that Sorry. we've just coded we've just coded the um, uh, whether the spouse worked in the business at, at baseline and started to look at that and that's that's also you know question in some of these is is do we see some where there's where where it was they told us it was one member or the other that owned it but it, but it was maybe always sort of a a, a joint business at, at from the beginning. Um, so, um, just on my question, um, the education uh, stuff is really interesting. I was wondering whether it would make sense to actually look at the age of the child when this thing happened. Because if you look at some of the CCT papers, yeah. and they look at the um, whether the child was what level of schooling they would have potentially been at yeah. or near to, etc. I think that would be an interesting form of heterogeneity that isn't just data mining, right? It kind of makes sense. There. Yeah. So the problem is that that the more we kind of limit on age. The, we might get sharper results, but we get smaller, much smaller samples. And so, and so, uh, I have kind of, you know, looked at. Let's take children who were just twelve and older when that when this thing happened, twelve to eighteen when it happened, rather than all the way down to four, which is what we ended up resurveying on. Partly we resurveyed on that because those are people who were eighteen when we did this follow up surveys, and we didn't have to worry about surveying children, um, uh, you know, minors. But, um, but but also, I think our thought was that, you know, they need to be at least 18 now to have education complete. So we're not going to know and if, if they're not older than that. So we have cut off the bottom on that. But the problem is that we ended them with smaller sample sizes. And then, and then you know, we might get sharper results, but we get, but we, but we you know, we, we, we lose the power on the, on the sample size. Okay. 
Um, it's super exciting to see the um, long term results. Uh, I guess the so I had had a couple of of thoughts. Um, I mean, it's suggested, and this has kind of come up in a couple of the papers that have been in the seminar, so like uh, Namrata's, but also Jeremy's, uh, you know, makes you wonder about whether they're capital labor complementarities, and it's really difficult to hire the kind of labor you need, and that puts some sort of ceiling. Um, so I wonder mm. if there, that might be one story mm. to um, pursue, because it, it does, um, I mean, in very different contexts, but it does seem like people often hire way less in these micro enterprises than they do for right. agriculture. Um, I guess another thing might be just like demand. Um, and I wondered if the uh, tsunami variation might help you look at that. Uh, so there's just some sort of ceiling for, um, you know, how much can, can be consumed. Um, and then the second thought was uh, like just completely different literature, but there's all this uh, sort of labor literature coming up about people's preferences for particular occupational choice. So like people mm -hmm. will take the salary hit in order to be able to switch to kind mm -hmm. of work that is more flexible. Um, and I mean, the long term, the results from the UBI trial are very similar to yours. It's like uh, people shift into enterprises, but there's no overall increase in, in income. So I wonder if that's uh, like understanding why people might uh, yeah. prefer to be doing particular kinds of activities. And if yeah. the grant enables them to do that, it might enhance welfare, even if they don't have higher income right. or consumption. Right. Okay, fine. So that's, that's actually, so that's interesting. I, so, so that, that's, I, I, I looked at some point, and again, this is a, there's a power issue on this when we try to do it for the full sample because, because partly missing data and things like that, but, but also just, um, it, it, it's a subset of cases to which it applies. I think this is where the heterogeneity in the outcomes is, is challenging because it's like there's certain businesses where what you, you know any of those stories are probably the right story, but it's not the full sample. So when you try and look at it in the full sample, it's hard. Um, that's but the, but it's a really good it's a really good question to to look at. I, um, what are other so remember, these are all businesses at the beginning. So it's nobody's switching into business that wasn't in business. They're all business at the beginning, except that maybe there are other household members who are working in the business who were previously working as wage workers and that that's why the household income isn't going up. I, my sense of why that, that first graph, which is the most puzzling one where the household income kind of disappears even when profits are, are not, is partly that's being driven by... Um, attrition from the household you know it's 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 10 percent of the sample that's passed away or something like that by the time we do the the survey so that's one less worker in the in the household and and even if somebody takes it over maybe that somebody was doing wage work before and now they're doing the now they're running the enterprise so you lose the wage income even though you're you're keeping the higher profit income um we haven't fully unpacked all that yet and i i i, I have to go that's that's something that we we should look at more more carefully and it's a great idea to kind of think about whether this is drawing, even among the owners who are still there, are we drawing people out of the wage labor market to work in the enterprise? Because I think I've looked at whether they're hiring outsiders and not seen anything. But so the that doesn't mean the labor markets aren't a problem. It could be that that's a problem. But but I don't think we see anything on hiring outsiders. But I'm not sure I've looked at we've looked at the within household income hours and and seen whether that's changing. That's that's a great idea to, to look at to look at that. Uh, Thank Jim. you very much, Chris. I, uh, I think we're out of time. Okay, we're out of time. Yep. So, Jin, I'll, would, I'll catch uh, up with Jin at a later at a later point. I I, I, I know where you are, Jin. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, we can catch up. Anyway, so again, thanks thanks, thanks all for, for all the questions. Yeah, uh, and for your presentation, Chris. Uh, before I let you all go, let me briefly remind you of next week's seminar. Um, next week we'll have Uncaring from Princeton University presenting on the social multiplier from visibility, experimental evidence from deworming in Kenya. The presentation will be back at 4 p.m. UK time. So there's going to be a change of time given the difference in time zones. Yeah, thank you very much. And I hope to see you again soon. <laughs>